joy is my heart. Lord, I'm so thankful. Lord, I thank you for your touch. I'm so grateful. You are the
winds of the storm. You are the air I breathe. Oh Lord, you are. You are the air I breathe. Oh Lord, you are. You are. You are the air I breathe. Oh Lord, you are. You are the air I breathe. Oh Lord, you are. You are. You are the air I breathe. Oh Lord, you are. You are the air I breathe. Oh Lord, you are. Glorious God, beautiful King, excellent God, I bow before your throne. Glorious God, beautiful King, excellent God, I bow before your throne, bow before your throne, worship at your feet, bow before your throne, you're the glorious God, bow before your throne, worship at your feet, bow before your throne. You're the glorious God, glorious God, beautiful King, excellent God, I bow before your throne, glorious God, beautiful King, excellent God, I bow before your throne, bow before your throne, worship at your feet, bow before your throne, you're the glorious God, bow before your throne, worship at your feet, bow before your throne. You're the glory, bow before, bow before your throne. Worship at your feet, bow before your throne. You're the glory, bow before, bow before your throne. Worship at your feet, bow before your throne. You're the glorious God. I stand amazed in your presence. There is nothing you cannot do. I stand amazed in your presence. There is joy, peace, and hope. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you in all the earth. There's no one like you, Jesus. There is no one like you. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. I stand amazed. I stand amazed in your praise. Oh, there is nothing, there is nothing you cannot do. I stand amazed, I stand amazed in your presence. There is joy, there is joy, peace and hope. There is no one like you, 
Jesus, there is no one like you in all the earth. There is no one like you, Jesus. There is no one like you. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name, you do, you do mighty things, you do glorious things, you're a faithful God, awesome is your name, the name of Jesus, I have another name, King of all kings, no other name like him. The name of Jesus, I have another name. Alpha and Omega, no other name like his. The name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, I have another name. King of all kings, no other name like his. The name of Jesus. I have another name, Alpha and Omega, no other name like his, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, I have another name, King of all kings, no other name like his, the name of Jesus, I have another name. Alpha and Omega, no other name of the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, I have another name, King of all kings, no other name like his, the name of Jesus, I have another name, Alpha and Omega. No other name like it. Agu, Agu na chimbo one. You're the beauty of my life. I worship you today. Agu, Agu na chimbo one. You're the beauty of my life. I worship you today. Agu. Agu, Agu na chembo one. You're the beauty of my life. I worship you today. Agu, Agu, Agu na chembo one. You're the beauty of my life. I worship you today. Agu, Agu. Aguna Chimbo one, you're the beauty of my life. I worship you today. Agu, Agu, Aguna Chimbo one, you're the beauty of my life. I worship you today. Agu, Agu. Aguna Chembo, you're the beauty of my life. I worship you today. Agu, Agu, Aguna Chembo, you're the beauty of my life. I worship you today. At the center of it all is you that I see, is you that I see, oh Lord. At the center of it all is you 
you that I see, it's you that I see. There is power in your name. There is power in your name. Miracles happen in your name. As you lift a voice in praise, is you that I see. Is you that I see. There is power in your name. There is power in your name. Miracles happen in your name. As you lift a voice in praise. Is you that I see. Is you that I see. At the center of it all, at the center of it all, is you that I see, is you that I see. At the center of it all, at the center of it all, is you that I see, is you that I see. There is power in your name. There is power in your name. Miracles happen in your name. As you lift a voice, he prays. Is you that I see? Is you that I see? There is power in your name. There is power in your name. Miracles happen in your name. As you lift a voice in praise, is you that I see? Is you that I see? There is power in your name. There is power in your name. Miracles happen in your name. As you lift a voice in praise, is you that I see, is you that I see. You are high and lifted up, there is no one like you. You are high and lifted up, there is no one like you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are high, you are high and lifted up. There is no one like you. You are high and lifted up. There is no one like you. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Halle, halle. Hallelujah. 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 H
Hallelujah, Hosanna. 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 I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back. Cause I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back. Cause I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back. Cause I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back. Cause I want to see my Jesus someday. Goodbye world, I say no longer with you. Goodbye pleasures of sin. I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind to go, go to it the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go, go to it the rest of my life. Goodbye, world. I stay no longer with you. Goodbye, pleasures of sin. I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind to go, go away the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go, go away the rest of the life. Fire, 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 follow me. Fire, 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 follow me. At the day of Pentecost, fire followed me. At the day of Pentecost, fire followed me. Oh, fire, 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 fire followed me. Fire, 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 fire followed me. At the day of Pentecost, fire followed me. At the day of Pentecost, fire followed me. Oh, fire, 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 fire followed me. Fire, 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 fire followed me. At the day of Pentecost, fire follow me. At the day, at the day of Pentecost, fire follow me. Hallelujah, Hosanna. Hallelujah, Hosanna. Hallelujah, Hosanna. Hallelujah, Hosanna. Oh, hallelujah, Hosanna. 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 You came from heaven to work to show the way from the earth to 
the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my death to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on. Lord, I lift your name on high. 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 Hosanna. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name. Lord, we lift up your name. With our hearts full of praise. With our hearts full of praise. Be exalted, O oh Lord. Be exalted, O oh Lord, my God. Hosanna in the high, and Lord, we lift up your name. Oh, Lord, we lift up your name. With a heart full of praise, with a heart full of praise, be exalted, O oh Lord, be exalted, O oh Lord, my God. Hosanna in the high. Nara nara ib nare kere nare kere mo nara 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 ib nare kere nare kere mo nara 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 ib. Nare kere, nare kere mo. Jesus, you love me too much, oh, too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love, oh. Jesus, you love me too much, oh, too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love, oh. Oh, Jesus, you love me too much, oh, too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love, oh. Jesus, you love me too much, oh, too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love, oh. oh Jesus, you love me too much, oh. Too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love, oh. Hallelujah, we bless the Lord. We want to praise the Lord with two Swahili praise songs as we continue. You hi Jehovah, you hi Milele, Mataifa. Sifu, yes, who you are, you hi Jehovah, you hi Milele, Mata Ifa, Tum Sifu, yes, who you are, you hi Midelba, you hi Jehovah, you hi Milele. 
Tum Sifu, yes, you high, you high Jehovah, you high Jehovah, you high Milele, Mata Hifa, Tum Sifu, yes, you high, Sifana to Kufu, Nizako, Ebona Wangu, Nizako, Ebona. Sifa na utukufu ni zako wewe bwana wangu Sifa na utukufu ni zako wewe bwana Sifa zako za vuma za vuma 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 sifa na utukufu ni zako wewe bwana wangu 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 Sifa zako zavuma zavuma Sifa zako zavuma zavuma Sifa zako zavuma Sifa zako zavuma zavuma Ubariki wa milele Fadili zako ni za milele Utukuzwe umetenda me mababa Ubariki we Ubariki wa milele Fadili zako ni za milele Utukuzwe umetenda me mababa Ubarikiwe, ubarikiwe milele Fadhili zako ni za milele Utukuzwe, umetenda me mababa Ubarikiwe, ubarikiwe milele Fadhili zako ni za milele Utukuzwe Umetenda me mababa Wani shangaza Matendo ya kona ajabu Utukuzwe Umetenda me mababa Wani shangaza Matendo ya kona ajabu Utukuzwe umetenda me mababa Wewe ni mungu Wewe ni mungu Utukuzwe umetenda me mababa Wewe ni mungu Wewe ni mungu Umetenda me mababa Ubarikiwe, ubarikiwe milele Fadhili zako ni za milele Utukuzwe, umetenda me mababa Ubarikiwe, ubarikiwe milele Fadhili zako ni za milele Utukuze, umetenda me mababa Wanisha ngaza, matendo ya koya hachobu Utukuze, umetenda me mababa Wanisha ngaza, matendo ya koya hachobu Utukuze, umetenda me mababa Wewe ni mungu Wewe ni mungu Utukuze, umetenda me mababa Wewe ni mungu Wewe ni mungu Utukuze, umetenda me mababa 
Mwana mama jeshi leo twakuinua Mwana mama jeshi leo twakuinua Wastahiri sifa heshima utukufu Wastahiri sifa heshima utukufu Bwana 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 mama majeshi leo twakuinua Mwana majeshi leo twakuinua wastahili sifa heshima utukufu wastahili sifa heshima utukufu bwana 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 majeshi leo twakuinua mwana majeshi leo twakuinua Wastahili sifa heshima utukufu wastahili sifa heshima utukufu bwana 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 majeshi leo twakuinua bwana majeshi leo twakuinua wastahili sifa heshima utukufu wastahili sifa heshima utukufu bwana bwana praise jesus uh, we uh, we want to welcome you to this broadcast and um, i want to request you to invite as many people as possible uh, so that um, we can share in his goodness. We can share in his goodness, uh, his love, glory to God. And um, uh, we'll find that um, God will do what he has never done in our lives. And uh, I want to thank you, uh, all of you, wherever you are watching us from. And please let us know where you are watching this broadcast from. Um, more so uh, if it is your home because sometimes we go through it and uh, we continue in prayers and we pray for you. So let us know where you are watching us from and uh, uh, God will bless you. I want just to speak a word of blessing upon your life, uh, you who is watching us today, that uh, God will continually manifest in his life, in your life, I mean. God will continually manifest in your life in every aspect, in every way, in the matchless name of Jesus. I want just to say you are loved. And uh, we are praying for you uh, continually, uh, day in, day out. And we know that we shall overcome uh, these challenges of life. Wha one thing that I know about um, life is that life is full of many challenges, many challenges. Life is full of many challenges. And uh, uh, through it all, the Lord uh, makes us to overcome uh, the challenges that we have. The Lord makes us to overcome the challenges that we have. And, uh, and I thank God. I thank God uh, that uh, um, he enables us to overcome uh, many at times in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't know where you are watching us from. And um, I've given you a question on our broadcast because this broadcast is not very long. Uh, I had started uh, it uh, in the car. Uh, when we were coming and uh, one thing that was pleasing me is that I found that people are so many in the city and um, for me that was not a negative it was a positive because we have been praying we have been praying that God will do something and especially to kill and destroy the spirit of fear because he has not given us a spirit of fear but of power of love and of a sound mind and therefore I was excited when I saw many people on the road and in fact we were caught in a traffic uh, so to speak uh, which we have not seen a very long time and um, and uh, it's very exciting i'm telling you it's very exciting to see people back uh, you know uh, to you know a bit a bit uh, people may say oh it is end month that's why they are out there but uh, for me i don't look at it that way you know we are overcoming fear we are overcoming fear because we know who is in charge and we know who is our healer the balm of gilead and this is what this broadcast is about. We are celebrating the balm of Gilead. Hallelujah. Because we know the balm of Gilead is our sutta, is our healer, is our restorer. Hallelujah. And there is nothing that is impossible with him. Nothing at all is impossible with our God. It doesn't matter what has been said or what we have heard. I want to speak like Paul. 
in the book of Acts 20, 24. He says, none of these things move me. Hallelujah. None of these things move me. And that's the way we should be. Nothing should actually move us. Nothing at all should move us. Hallelujah. If we can pray, every worry is cast away. You know, if we can pray. And that's what I use as my, my medicine. You know, many times I'm prayed up. You know, I'm prayed up. And today I wanted us to speak about something. Um, uh, and I'm with Pastor Mkobe. Pastor Mkobe is here. Maybe she can just say hi. Even as I, we get into uh, the broadcast, we'll take a bit of your time because uh, of that, uh, uh, what we started uh, in the car already. And then, but I want just to uh, speak to one or two people and um, uh, share with them uh, on their call. You know, has God called you to serve him? How has he, how do you know? How do you know somebody, uh, God has called you? What are the signs that you have been called? You know, because many people, uh, shy away from proclaiming the gospel because they feel it's only for a few people. Maybe the bishop, maybe the uh, archbishop, maybe the, the the evangelist, maybe the teacher or the pastor or the prophetess. But are you called? Are you called? How do you know you are called? So that you walk in the authority that you're supposed to walk in, you know. And uh, uh, Pastor Mkobe will greet us and then we move on. Good afternoon to all of you, our viewers. We just want to welcome you to the Balm of Gilead, wherever you are watching us from. It is indeed our time to do a spiritual audit to find out how we are relating with our maker, Karibu San. Hallelujah. Uh, that is Pastor Mkobe, uh, one of our resident pastors there too. And um, you are welcome to the broadcast, uh, Pastor Mkobe. Uh, we thank God for her life. Glory to God. Now, we want to go straight into the word. Second Timothy. Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 9. Second Timothy uh, chapter 1 and verse 9. Glory to God. The Bible says, who has saved us? Are you saved? That is one of the qualifications. Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but in accordance with his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Hallelujah. Are you called? Are you called? What are the qualifications of one being called? First of all, you have to be born again. So have you accepted Jesus as the savior of your life? Have you accepted him as a savior of your life? Glory to God. Have you accepted him? Have you accepted the Lord as the savior of your life? Is the first calling. Number two, God is holy. And therefore his call is a holy one. And he wants to call those who are also holy. Are you walking in holiness and righteousness? And the Bible says there in 2 Timothy 1, 9, we are not called according to our works. It's not according to our works. Lest anybody should boast that, you know, I built a children's home. Oh, I'm the one who feeds so and so. That's what I do. I do the other. I do this. I do the other. It's not according to works. The basic qualification for anyone to be called is first of all, they should accept Christ. Have you accepted him? Have you taken him as the Lord of your life? Have you believed in his righteousness? Because none of us can be righteous unless righteousness is given to us. And that's what Christ has done. He has given us righteousness. When we get born again, he gives us righteousness. He also gives us wisdom. Wisdom is made available to us. Righteousness is made available to us. Because your own righteousness, according to your works, is like filthy rags. That's what the word of God says. Your own righteousness 
You know where you say I do this. How, how come I'm not being given a position in church? And I do this. I feed the. Uh, uh, I feed this. I give a lot of money. Therefore, I should become a pastor. No. The qualification of being called are only two: be born again and walk in holiness. Then righteousness is automatic when you are born again because Christ becomes your righteousness automatically. And once you are there, automatically you begin to understand that indeed, haha, you have been called into salvation. Indeed, you have now become a child of God. Hallelujah. We have been given authority to call him Abba Father. We are sons. The Bible says in the book of uh, John chapter 1 and verse 11, he came to his own. His own did not accept him. In verse 12 he says, but as many as accepted him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. Once you accept him, you are adopted into sonship. You are adopted into sonship. You become a son. And that means anything that is in the kingdom is available for you to do. Hallelujah. Anything that God deems fit for you to do, you have been become qualified to do. Because now you are not a stranger to the commonwealth of Israel. You are not a stranger to the kingdom of God. But you are part and parcel of the kingdom. And you belong to the commonwealth of Israel. And when you belong to that commonwealth, it means that the responsibility therein are supposed to be done, undertaken by us. The responsibility there are supposed to be undertaken by us. And I believe many of us that are watching me and others that will watch us later have this call. And you're wondering, am I supposed, what am I supposed to be doing? You understand? Some of you don't even pray. They wait for the services to be there in church for you to pray the corporate prayers. You have no altar of your own. The Lord is calling you to start your own altar Start a family altar and then be enjoined to the corporate altar, which is the altar or, or in your church where you go, where you worship. You have to be connected to it. Hallelujah. And therefore, as a child of God, when you ask, have I really been called? Yes, you have been called. You have been called. In your father's house, there are many responsibilities. Hallelujah. And there are many vessels. Some are made of gold, some of silver, some of wood, some of plastic. They are all very crucial because what you can do with a plastic uh, uh, item cannot be done with a steel metal or a steel uh, vessel or a metal vessel. Like, for example, when I look at the microwave in the house. If you have ever used a microwave, uh, uh, microwave you realize that you cannot use a spoon. You cannot put a spoon in the plate. You can use ceramic. You can use melamine. You can use plastic. But you cannot put steel. You cannot put steel there. And therefore, that does not mean that the spoon is not important because you cannot eat without a spoon. It doesn't mean a, mean a sufuria, sufuria, sufuria. Sufuria is not important or what we call pans are not important. And yet you cannot put them in the microwave. But you need them because they are the ones you use, pots you use to cook. Hallelujah. I want us to invite, I invite many people because I want to share uh, very important things. I want to share my own testimony of the way God called me. And how do I know I was called? Glory to God. Because a lot of people think uh, calling, you know, you have to hear a voice and sometimes a thunder and sometimes lightning and sometimes shakings because you, before you are called. No. Our father is just. First of all, he has called us into salvation, all of us. He has called us to be born again. And once you become a son, you take the responsibility that you are given. I, I hold the office of a prophet, and that is a responsibility that I was given. I don't know what responsibility you have been given. Glory to God. I don't know whether you have been called as a pastor, as an evangelist, or you are an usher, or a worshiper. All those are very, very important responsibility. Even administration. What if you are there in the house of God and you have been asked by your pastor, can you become an administrator in this church? Can you become a cleaner in this church? You know, all those are responsibilities. I remember when I got born again. I got born again in December 2002. I got born again 
in December 2002. Is how many years now? 17. Oh, there are many, many years. 17 years walking with the Lord. 17 years walking with Jesus. Hallelujah. I got uh, born again in the year 2002 in a church known as Christ Embassy. And I think we all know Christ Embassy uh, uh, with the, the most esteemed uh, Pastor Chris Oyakilome uh, under the leadership of the most esteemed uh, Pastor uh, Chris Oyakilome, PhD. Uh, that was my pastor uh, that time, but uh, I got born again in Kenya here. The church had just begun. And uh, we were, there were four. There was pastor and the wife. And then there were two other people. And I was the fifth uh, person, so to speak, when I joined the church. And um, when I joined the church, I was not born again. In fact, uh, I was just, uh, 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 I used to stay in the house. And then my mother came to Nairobi and she told me, you cannot be staying in the house. Uh, now you are married. You have to go to church. And because where I was living was close to NPC Valley Road, I began to go there. Sometimes I could even walk because we were just neighbors. I could walk to Valley Road and uh, attend. But I used to attend only worship. My church would end with worship. Worship and that's why worshipers have to be very powerful and ushers. When you are called into ushering or greeters ministry, it's a very crucial department. And you could make or break people. And therefore, the ushers were pleasant. Uh, in NPC, I would go in and um, I'm shown where to sit. Of course, the benches were there and I would sit. And um, the worship would be so powerful, I would cry. You know, but not the start. In the start, I do not cry. Uh, in the start, I used to just be solid there and I'm listening. I'm, I'm trying to fulfill all righteousness of my mother because my mother wants me to go to church. I'm married now and I have to be, uh, to be going to church. And uh, she also said, you cannot raise children when you're not going to church. You know, you'll have disaster. And uh, I think out of fear, I went to church, out of fear. But that's not to say they were not born again. I was raised by uh, blessed memories, uh, parents who were born again, they loved God. They were in Tukutenderesa, you know, the ones who hit each other's chest. And I think uh, I, uh, somehow, somehow I got bored of all that and I never gave my life to Christ. And, um, but I was born in a family that knew God. Uh, imagine, I was born in a family that I knew God. And uh, until I go through university and then I get uh, into marriage, God was gracious all that time. I'm already working. Uh, as a teacher and my mother follows me to my house i thank god for parents you know because she was not satisfied that i'm now out of her house and i'm not going to church you know at least when i was in her house they would force me to go to church but now i'm not in her house and i'm not going to church whoa she followed me to my house and she told me i want you to go to church and uh, originally we were aic I go to AIC, I see that it's far because there's no motivation. Then I decide, why don't I go to NPC? And when I go to NPC, um, I would only attend, I've told you, the Ministry of Ashes, I, I witnessed it, and the Ministry of Worship. And prayer, prayer, opening prayer. The moment worship was over, oh my God, I just leave. And I go home. And I had a companion, that is my husband who would be waiting for me outside uh we go out him he was not going to church at all in fact he had only two suits my husband had only two suits one for a wedding and another one for funerals and i knew if there was a funeral i would get him the black suit if it's a wedding he would wear a gray suit those were the only two he was a professor and they were not wearing suits he would go with a shirt uh, uh the goodness about him he would tuck in the shirt and belt up but he never had suits. In fact, he has gotten suits after he became a pastor. Hallelujah. When he entered the call, God has actually given him properly. You know, he bought suits because, you know, in the kingdom, we are very neat. In our kingdom, the kingdom of God, we have to be smart. We have to dress well. Hallelujah. You can see Pastor Mkobe here. She's very smart with a very nice hair and a very beautiful. Glory to God. And uh, that is it. 
Then we go to, uh, I was telling you the story. While at NBC, uh, I'm not born again. Worship is over. I leave. But after a month or so, the worship started piercing my spirit. And now I did not want to leave. I would cry, 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 cry. Hallelujah. Cry when the worship is going on. I love worshipers. You don't know what you do. You usher people into the presence of God. And this reminds me of the story in 2 Chronicles 20 from 17. The story of Jehoshaphat. That when he was under siege, hallelujah, where people come from far. Jesus is Lord, I tell you. Helen is saying that. <laughs> Musila, okay, what's wrong with you, pastors? Even during COVID, uh, at the offering and uh, tithes, uh, shame. Uh, who is this abusing us, uh, Musula? You know, we have to, uh, giving and uh, offerings and tithes and all this is part of worship. So Musula, you shouldn't uh, be abusing people. Uh, seek to understand. Because what we are doing requires money. We need to pay for the office where I'm doing the broadcast to bless people. So it's not like uh, uh, money comes from heaven. No, it is you to give. And I was talking about power of sacrifice. Giving is part and parcel of um, worship. So when you are looking at us and you are enjoying the broadcast, it costs money. But preaching is free. Worship is free. The call of God is free. But what we are doing costs money. It costs money. You can see the lights and they are very beautiful. No wonder you are attracted to this platform. Musula Obe. You would not have come to this platform if it was dull. But what we are doing costs us money. And that money does not fall from heaven. God has entrusted the church to do that. We are not only that, we are involved in charity. We are blessing our own people. Glory to God. I need to have a one-on-one -on -one with you and bless you and tell you what we need to do. Because when you go to a hotel right now during COVID, do you pay or you don't pay? When you go to the market, do you pay or you don't pay? You pay. Hallelujah. Therefore, for us to be online, we need money. We require money to be online. And you are enjoying the broadcast because it's very beautiful. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So sometimes people don't understand. But uh, you cannot separate your giving from the work of God. Let's go on. Hallelujah. But for me, you don't pay me. It's free. I used to be paid as a teacher. I was a teacher. And God called me into full-time ministry. I'm about to talk about, about it. Dorcas, yes, the gospel is free. But the means... To spread the gospel cost money. I'm telling you, it costs a lot of money. It's not free at all, at all. And giving is also worship. Thank you, Lucy and Joroge. Hallelujah. We need to tell people because people think about churches being free. It's not even a charity. I run a charity, a foundation, where I take care of uh, street boys. And you know what? If I don't have people who are partnering with me in form of money, it cannot go anywhere. It cannot go anywhere. Like this Saturday, I will be uh, standing with families that don't have. You know, all that costs money. You understand? It costs money. You can't get anything from anywhere free. I can't go to, my, to any shop and say, because I'm a pastor, give me uh, unga, give me bread, give me what? Is this money that we give that uh, helps us to be able to move the gospel uh, forward? But let uh, him not uh, distract us. We don't want to be distracted. There's something I want to say. <laughs> it's good to explain, ma'am very true what you are saying hallelujah but this is not what i wanted to say today no i talked about uh, worship uh, uh, sacrifice being powerful but i need to talk about that and i will be talking about it now what i was saying to you i want you to know um my call the way it was done and how it was done glory to god and thank you for inviting people online and i want you to keep inviting people and sharing the broadcast because this might just help somebody hallelujah because a lot of people think uh, that uh, I got born again in my house, father's house. No wonder um, I'm in now in kingdom. Others think uh, while I was going through school, uh, I was born again. No, it's until I got married and the grace of God just located me and God created the path. Let me tell you, God is already creating a path for you in order for you to fulfill your destiny, in order for you to serve God. And many of you are called, just like I've shared, that when I got to NPC, I was welcomed by ushers that were wonderful. I remember they were wearing red and white. I can remember that vividly and a good jacket, the way um, Kenya Airways people dress. And your smartness in the kingdom and when you are serving is very important. Then number two, 
The other thing I, I, I found is that worship was very inspired. And therefore, for me, as a person who is not born again, I was attracted to it. And that's why I say it did not take long. It did not take long. It did not take long. Before long, I began to cry during worship. You know, I would find myself just crying. Oh, oh, I'm crying uh, during worship. And I would tell myself, what is wrong with you, Grace? Why are you crying? Why are you crying? You know, I would pinch myself, wipe my tears. And when I find myself crying, I would leave because I was finding myself stupid. You know, but the Bible tells us the things of the kingdom are foolishness to the perishing world. Right that time, I did not understand what is happening to me. And I was seated with friends because I would invite my friends. Let's meet at church, you know, because we have another agenda. After that, we wanted to go somewhere. You know, we wanted to go and have lunch. And therefore, we would be there with our children. I would take my child to, to the Sunday school. You, you understand what I'm saying? And then I'm, I'm here with, um, with uh, my friends. And they have also taken their children to Sunday school. And um, we would be there just... Um, you know, after church to go, we were fulfilling righteousness. You know, you are a mother, you are married. So you're going to church just to please your parents. And that's what I was doing. And it's very sad because I was doing when I'm already married. But I thank God for my mother. I thank God for my mother because she knew the way to follow me. And she followed me. She discipled me in every way. Now, when I would leave uh, after church, after a while now, after one month or so, I would find myself on family TV, which I never used to watch. I was all the time watching movies. Movies from movie A. You remember the uh, VHS? That's what I, I had so many in the house. You know, it was like a library. That's what I was watching. All the time watching, all the time watching, all the time watching, you know? And uh, this time when I went to the house, I went to family TV. I thank God for family TV. Uh, because it also added to me, you know, added and added and added. And while there, I thank God because I watched Family TV. Then one time I saw Pastor Chris Oyakilome, I think on KTN or something, uh, preaching. And I was so impressed. The church was so big. People looked happy. Oh, my God. And me with my drinking, I was not as happy because I was drinking. With my husband, we were drinking. In fact, he exaggerated my drinking because he loved drinking. And that is what, when we finished eating, there was a drink. On Sunday and Saturday before the days uh, uh, I would leave, uh, you know, I would not uh, go to church, we would be drinking from morning. You know, after breakfast, we begin to talk. Then he says, can I serve you something, my dear? And uh, he would serve me and it was very good at that. Glory to God. And um, the time I began to go to church, he would be waiting for me because he knew I would not take more than an, an hour or 30 minutes in church. 30 minutes max and would be going somewhere. And uh, <laughs> my God, we thank God. We thank God. And that would make me so happy and would be coming back to the house about 7 o'clock. You know, we have gone somewhere. We have gone to Kitengela. Kitengela was not as developed as it is now. And that's where many families would go or Rungai. And... Um, that went on, but now there is a seed that has been planted in me. Because any time I would see a pastor preaching, I would pay attention and watch, you know. And um, this particular day, I got to NPC, and uh, after church, I said, I want to see this church that is also at Silver Spring. Because they wrote that uh, Christ Embassy was at Silver Spring. And I was now desiring to see this church, go to NPC, go and see... Uh, Christ Embassy. And when I got there, I thank God for the people, uh, the, let's say the waiters or those who usher people in the hotel. Because I asked them, is this church that they are saying called Christ Embassy, is it really here? And they said yes. I said, but it can't fit here. That church I saw on television is very big. He said, no, madam, this church is here. Come on Sunday and see for yourself. Hallelujah. I thank God for their lives. Let me tell you, you can't be a witness. You can be a witness. I'm talking about people that are not wearing collars and saying, you know, I'm a bishop, I'm a pastor, and I thank God for all the pastors, the bishops, those who have been called into their offices. But let me tell you, this man, and uh, there were two men, and they told me, you know what? Um, there's that big church that you saw. Come next Sunday, because right now they have finished. And I went home, 
And I decided, you know what, this Sunday I'm going to come here. I called my friends and said, there's a church I want to find out about. Whether they are saying the, the, the waiters there told me the truth or the people who are serving there at the reception told me the truth. And when I went, I was not impressed. I just want to say sometimes where you'll find your salvation and where you'll find your breakthrough is not an impressive platform. When I went to that place and I found the pastor preaching, first of all, it was not Pastor Chris or Yakinomi. Number two, there were only four people and I was the fifth. And I looked and I wanted to leave. But because I wanted to be courteous, I said I will be courteous and then when I go to the washroom, I will not return. So I sat. And uh, it looks like this um, service had begun a long time. I think they were starting an hour earlier or something. I found the pastor, there was no worship, I did not see it, but the pastor, of course, and who else would have worshipped? Maybe the wife. And um, it was in the middle. And uh, the pastor was preaching and preaching, and I want to tell you a very boring sermon. Very boring. And uh, because he was from another country, I was just listening uh, 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 at his pronunciation of things, and in my head correcting every pronunciation, correcting, correcting, correcting. You know, like uh, Tasca, he was talking about people who drink and say, People love Tusca. And I say it's not Tusca in my head. It's Tasca. You know, I've gone to correct, you know, the teacher in me. I've gone to correct, to correct, to correct. But let me tell you, at a point, I found myself now listening. He began to talk about the Holy Spirit. He began to talk about the love of Jesus. He began to say even those who did not merit was, were loved by uh, Jesus. He talked about the grace of God and said, you know, this grace does not only come to those who are born again alone, but even those who are not born again, the rain will rain for them and the sun will shine. Ah, that message caught me. I said, okay, that's where I belong. This grace has located me. And indeed, I began to see. The grace of God took me through a school because somebody was praying for me. My parents were praying for me. The grace of God got me a job. And now I got a husband. The grace of God was good. And I, th I thought in my head, he should stop there. The grace of God. That one is perfect. This church is talking to me. I will come next Sunday. Lo and behold, he went on and went on. And then he said, if you want to give your life to Christ, you know now, he's the one preaching and four of us are seated. If you want to give your life to Christ, that you may enjoy higher grace, exceeding grace, yeah, hyper grace, multiplication of peace, give your life to Christ. I said, if this small grace that God, basic grace I've been enjoying has given me all this, then this Christ is good. And I found myself lifting my hand. What I did not know, all these people were connected. You know, they were together. And when I gave my, I, I, I lifted my hand, oh, the church stopped there. And they all came to me to pray for me to get born again. And I got born again. And by Monday, I think it was over holidays, because it was December, the wife of the pastor came home. And she told me, Sister Grace, uh, we don't live very far from you because I, I left my address at what uh, we have come. I want to pray with you and tell you more about the Holy Spirit and probably pray with you so that um, you, you, you can serve God, you know, uh, and um, like that. And uh, she prayed with me. And um, I'm telling you, by the grace of God, I began to speak in tongues in a very short time after she explained to me and prayed with me. You know, I began to speak in tongues. Then she told me this Sunday, you are coming to church. We want to explain to you because we want you to serve. I said, okay. So when I went to church, I was supposed to go 30 minutes before. And the first thing I was given is to be an usher. But now who are you ushering? There were no many people. And I felt this church must have people because if I'm an usher, I must usher people. And immediately I invited my friends. I invited my friends, I'm telling you. I became used of God immediately because you're going to usher yourself because it was only me and those other four. So immediately I began to invite people so that I can have people to usher. Hmm. It sounds funny. It sounds funny because the purpose of inviting people is so that my department of ushering 
can become active. I was the only usher, but how do I usher myself and the pastor only? So I began to invite people. I invited people. I invited people. Others who were in the church also began to invite people and we invited people and we invited people and before long we were full. Glory to God. Look at that. Look at that. And that's why, what some of you do. Even online I see there are people who are inviting people. You are inviting people. What you are doing, you are doing a very big ministry. You are doing a very great job. You are doing an awesome job. Inviting people, inviting people. So I began to invite people so that as an usher I would have people to serve. How can I be ushering myself? And yet the pastor has said you are an usher. And I've been given that tag. I've kept it until now. I've keep, kept it as a souf. That was my first job in a church. And I did it with diligence because before long, I had actually people to usher in. Then the pastor told me, you are very charismatic. We want you to be speaking to the first timers. Now we have first timers, remember. We have first timers. And I began to speak to first timers. Then I was promoted. I was told you are going to be praying. You are a prayer warrior. So you must come early and pray. I did not know how to pray. I want to tell you. I would begin to pray and begin to cry. And my pastor, the lady pastor told me, you can't be crying. You need to pray for people. You are praying for the nation. You are praying for this. Now I would meet on Saturday to pray for the nation, pray for the church, pray for people to come to church. So I became a prayer warrior. How many things have I become? I'm an usher. I'm a prayer warrior. And I'm also uh, one talking to the first timers because the pastor said you are charismatic. I did not even understand what it meant in the context of the church. I'm learning all these things, but they never gave me time. Then from there, I became a worshiper. My voice was not bad like the way it is now. It is not bad. I, want, I don't want to confess it's bad. But I could now worship because I used to be in choir. So I learned the songs um, that were, you know, glory, glory, glory to the Lamb. You know, that song I first learned there. Glory, glory, glory to the Lamb. For you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb upon the throne. And I the lamb upon the throne. Hallelujah. So I became a worshiper. How many things am I? I'm an usher. I speak to first timers. I'm a prayer warrior. Hallelujah. I'm now a worshiper in the church. Everything. Everything. You know I'm there to do it. Hallelujah. And at first when I told my husband, he said, no, 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 no. You have to be careful. You have to be careful. Those people are overusing you. I said, Papa, we have to do it because there are not many people. Now the love of God is increasing in me. The love of God. I'm now inviting people. So who will see you worshiping? And it's not about people seeing you. But my level was that at that point. I began that now was pushing me to invite people, to invite people, to invite people. My passion for God grew because now I'm actively involved. I'm not sitting down because if I'm not a worshiper, I'm at the door ushering people. If I'm not ushering people, the service is over. I'm the one that, that is left to talk to people that have come. And that went on. My passion grew. My passion grew. Now my car, I would look for people, put people in my car so that we can go to church together. Hallelujah. I began to grow that way and I grew, I grew very fast because now at least I've accepted the, 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 the call of God. I did not know that what it, that is what it was, but it came that way with a pastor looking like they're overusing you. Oh, be an usher, be this. And I was present. I would come to church early and I would be the one to live last. And remember, I'm not even two months into ministry. I'm not two months in a church. I've just learned how to speak in tongues. I become a prayer warrior. Hiya. We take too long. We take too long. God wants to use you. 
God wants to use you, but you take too long. How long have you taken? You say, you know, I can't go early. I don't want a lot. Mimi nataka tu nifanye ushering. Who tells you that when you are ushering, God has not already called you? So I was an usher. I was an usher. Then we went on. I was promoted. I began in that church to read Rhapsody because Rhapsody was part and parcel of that ministry. Part, uh, uh, reading of Rhapsody, ra Rhapsody in the morning. And I began to, I was promoted to the level of Rhapsody. After that, the pastor said, no, it is you. Now we are many. We are many now. We are almost 300. I'm the one. And we have moved from where we were. We have moved to uh, this road, uh, Cabernet Road. You know, near Cabernet Road. We are there, off Cabernet Road. And um, now the church has grown to 300 people. We have gotten a bigger place. And because I was faithful from beginning, my promotion is continuous. I'm going higher and higher. Now I have become the one to lead prayers. Hallelujah. I'm the one leading prayers. Glory to God. I'm the one leading prayers. Hallelujah. And uh, after that, I read the rhapsody. And after that, I would see the first timers. I was promoted now. I'm the one who was teaching beginners classes. Hey! Hey, hey. I'm teaching beginners classes. Glory to God. Like that. Then for some reason, I did not continue with them. I left and I went to another church, House of Grace. And when I went to House of Grace, the Lord told me, now I could hear God after praying, uh, that my ears were somehow opened by God and I began to, 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 to hear God. Hallelujah. And the pastor, while in Christ embassy, the pastor would say, uh, Sister Grace, what is God doing? I was saying, or uh, God saying, and I would say, for example, if we have a program and um, we are praying for that program, he would call a number of us and he would say, what is God saying? And I was one of them. God would use me in that uh, area, even in now beginning to interpret uh, tongues. And then after that, when I left this ministry, not uh, for bad reason, it's a good ministry. And I love the man of God, Pastor Chris. I love the pastors in that church. I went now to House of Grace. When I went to House of Grace, and I thought now, what can I do here? Because now I'm a new person. And um, uh, how do I do? I will be talking about my, uh, my uh, leaving uh, Christ Embassy to House of Grace, another forum. I will talk to you about it because I don't want you to make that mistake. I don't want you to make that mistake. Hallelujah. Uh, we'll be talking about what, what causes people to leave church and what happens. Hallelujah. I will talk about that uh, in the next balm of Gilead. So keep it here and I will be talking about I want to be as vulnerable to you as possible so that you understand who I am and understand how people are called so that you don't look at it as a prisoner for only a few. Today you are not inviting people. I don't like the way... You're not inviting a lot of people. I want you to invite a lot of people so that our numbers go up. And I know why I'm saying that, because this is very crucial for many people. They don't understand whether God has called them. They don't understand how the calling comes. You think you come one day and you're just called and you become a pastor. No, it's a process. And you have to be uh, faithful at every level. I was faithful as an usher. I was faithful as a, 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 um, a worshiper. I did not say I cannot do any of them. You know, some people, you tell them, can you sing? And they say, I cannot sing. Oh, how can you not sing? You know, how can you not sing? God will give you the voice if he has said it. And I want to say that is what caused uh, uh, Moses not to be healed. Because when God called him to go and deliver the children of Israel, hallelujah, when God called him to go and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, and deliver the children of Israel, something happened. Something happened. He started complaining. He said, you know, I'm a stammerer. You know, I'm a stammerer. And the call was for him. The call was for him. You would have said, yes, Lord. And immediately, when you would have appeared before Pharaoh, you would have found himself speaking well. You know, a lot of people, uh, they complain more than accept what God has called them to do. For example, you are told, do this, do that. You are the one to lead prayers in the morning. You don't because you, you prefer sleeping than coming in the morning. It is cold. No. Rise up and do it. There are others who have been called to give. And I will be talking about my giving also. I will be talking about my giving. Because one day, my giving will manifest in terms of fruitfulness. I know that. I will be talking about that as well. The upper, then uh, of this Saturday. Let me talk about it this Saturday because we have just finished the power of sacrifice the other day. I want people to understand and for people uh, to know that somebody is not called in one day. But every time, from the time you are born again, 
There is a holy calling upon you. There is a holy calling upon you. And you can become absolutely anything. You can become anything in the, in the kingdom. If you would have told me I would become a bishop, I would have told you no. I would have shown you the people that are supposed to be bishops. You understand what I'm saying? If you would have told me I could uh, pray for people and they come back with a testimony, I would have told you no. I would have told you no. If you could have told me that I would uh, be speaking in tongues, I would have said no. But all these things happen when you are faithful and when you accept the call of God. Now, what was, was I saying? At what point was I, Pastor Mkobe? Now, leading prayers. Yes. How I moved. Wow. Now, I, I moved now. I went to House of Grace and I've told you, I've accepted to share the names of the churches. I was born as an AIC. Uh, I attended um, NPC because I was, uh, it was in my area. Then I saw Pastor Chris on TV. I went to that church, maybe talking to somebody right now. I know this could have happened to you. I don't know how you started, but I just want to be vulnerable. I want to be vulnerable today. I want to be vulnerable on Saturday about giving. I want to be like that until Sunday, what God will tell us to talk about. But I want to be very, very vulnerable to you so that you understand. I want just to be authentic. You know, sometimes we say, God will do it. God will do it. But today I want just to be me, you know, so that you know that uh, uh, God does not call people in a, in a very uh, dramatic, you know, people expect the dramatic, you hear a voice. No, there is a way God does it. He begins to call you with simple, pray for somebody, do this. And that's the way my life began. So when I went to House of Grace, now I'm a very senior person at uh, Christ Embassy. When pastors would travel, they would uh, entrust the church with me and I would be leading and I would do whatever it is that I'm supposed to do. Then now I've moved to House of Grace. Nobody knows me. I'm also mourning my mother because my mother had just passed on like two weeks ago. And uh, that will explain what was going on in my life. And now I'm in House of Grace. And um, uh, the person who led me to House of Grace is my husband who was not going to church. Now I've left House of uh, Christ Embassy. And I tell my husband now I'm looking for a church. I can't stay in the house. And uh, he tells me, go to House of Grace. Go to House of Grace. Uh, go to House of Grace. And uh, I said, okay, do you know them? He said, uh, uh, you know, um, my predecessor, the wife that he had married um, before, used to attend church with uh, Bishop Moravi. And he said, I know at least about Bishop Moravi. Go to the church of Bishop Moravi. Uh -huh. Now I went uh, to that church. And um, once I got there, uh, for six months I was crying because I was mourning my mother. And uh, when I was now starting settled, uh, I decided I wanted to do something. I wanted to serve. And uh, I thought, um, because they have the Department of Counselors, uh, those who hold people when they fall and those who will counsel you probably in the, in the first place, uh, I decided that was more suitable for me uh, to deal with. And um, I went for training for one day uh, with the, the pastor that was in charge. And um, after that, when I went back home, I was, I was due, I was giving birth to my third born girl. And um, after that, when I came back, God told me, this is not what I called you to do. You're not supposed to be in the counseling. I want you to be in the closet ministry. Mark that word, closet ministry. Closet, closet ministry. Closet ministry. Closet ministry. Closet is C-L-O-S-E-T. Closet ministry. Closet ministry. I want you to be in the closet ministry. It took me a lot of time to understand what closet ministry meant. It took me a big while to understand what closet ministry meant. But I said, okay, daddy, if you have said so, you will direct me. During that time, uh, Prophet Michael came from Ghana and he said that uh, he wants to recruit gatekeepers. Those are prayer warriors. He wants to recruit uh, gatekeepers. And I found myself remaining in that meeting. And while in that meeting, the Lord told me, this is what now I want you to do. And now you can understand my connection with my spiritual father. You know, we never talked because we were a few of us, but he was directing us on how to hold the gates for the church, for the country, for the family, you know. And that's where we connected, in a way spiritually. Because I remained for his meeting, as a gatekeeper, he taught us what it meant. And from next Sunday, I began to attend gatekeeping. 
I began to attend gatekeeping. I used to be there to pray in the morning, early morning before service begins. And if there was Kesha, I remained for Kesha as now a gatekeeper. The Lord told me that's what I want you to do. And after I had done that for almost two months, the Lord told me the other department I want you to be in is cleaning the church. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory to God. Is cleaning the church a call? Yes, it is a call. For me, nobody told me to clean the church. God himself. Nobody told me to keep the gates. God himself. And now I thank God for my pastors in Christ's embassy. Because they told me you have to be a prayer warrior. I never knew how to pray. I never knew how to remain and endure prayer time. But now I was an expert. I had become like an expert. I could pray for long. And that's what I've been called to do. Hallelujah. Then, now I'm, I'm called by God himself, no man, to clean. And I asked one of the ushers, is there a department of cleaning? They said, no, but we, I will introduce you to the guy that cleans. You know, I will introduce you to the guy that cleans the church. And I was introduced to the guy that clean, was cleaning the church. And when I went to him, I told him I want to be cleaning. He said, he said to me, they clean two of them. And he mentioned the name myself and somebody else. I said, from Tuesday, can I be coming to clean? He said, no problem, you can join us. And I was a teacher that time. So I had to create time because I asked, what time do you begin? And the time was in the morning. And I had to create time so that I'm available that time. And we begin to clean. And it was a huge place. And that became my work now. I was a cleaner and I was a prayer warrior in the church. And that's what I was until God called me into ministry. One day I'm praying, I'm going to school. But before I get there, let me say this. While I was cleaning, the Lord spoke to me to begin evangelizing. While in Christ embassy, I, I was uh, taking people to church. Now I'm in house of grace. I began to evangelize. I went to Kibira, I began to evangelize. And of course, you can't evangelize without preaching. And I found myself in the market in toy. And I was preaching there and preaching there. And I preached for a total of four months in, um, in, um, in the market. Four months. And that would be weekends. And uh, the time the schools have closed, I would go there. People thought I had lost my mind because some people would pass there and they know me. Teachers that we were teaching with, they would pass there and they would wonder whether I've lost my mind. None of them greeted me. One time I went with my sister and she stayed very far. But I preached in that market for four months. After that, the Lord told me, now you have to go to radio. Biblia Usema. Biblia Usema, I was told I have to teach on giving and kingdom service by God. No pastor sent me there. I sent myself to Biblia Usema. And I remember I was supposed to be paying 12000 every episode, every program. But I negotiated. I said, I'm a teacher. I have other responsibilities. I'm not a pastor. Please uh, just reduce for me. And it was re reduced to 8000 Hallelujah. It was reduced to 8000 And getting that 8000 my my dear, it was not easy. But I kept giving from anywhere I got. My husband, we had a business uh, of selling cereals. And I would take money there and pay for my program. And then... I would preach on giving and kingdom service. Giving and kingdom service. And through that, people got born again. I even have a son in this church uh, called Boniface Mwasia, Mwasia Wambua. I got him as a result of preaching on radio. He was all the way in uh, Mwingi. But he had me and he got born again. Hallelujah. So I did that. Uh, the people in the, in the radio told me uh, whether I needed support and pesa. I said no because I'm not a pastor. And therefore, I could not receive offerings from people. But God will provide. One thing that will intrigue you, one day I did not have money. And the Lord told me, go to, the, to your ATM. I remember we were living in Langata that time. And I went to Mobile. There was a place called Mobile. Mobile. Those who have stayed in, um, in Langata, you know where Mobile. I don't know whether it's still Mobile right now. But there was Mobile as you go down to wherever. Um, uh, Uhuru Gardens. Thank you. And uh, there's mobile there. And God told me, go to that account there uh, at mobile. 
And when I went, I removed 35,000. We'll be talking about that. Supernatural provision. You know, I'm a miracle. I'm a miracle child of God. I am a miracle. And therefore, for me, I don't doubt that God can call anyone. I don't doubt that God can call anyone. God can use anybody. So when I went there, I got the 35. I knew three was for my fuel. And uh, 32, I took straight to the station uh, to pay. They did not know how I got the money. But God began to provide for me in that way. God continued to provide for me. One time it was, it was in town. I had attended Pastor Sunas. And I will tell you why I had attended Pastor Sunas Church um, as we continue with this program because I can't finish it. Um, I had gone there. God had told me to go there. There was a reason. And um, I will be telling you now after my call how, how uh, you know, God, God will direct you at every point. And every time, hallelujah. And um, again, I had gone to Pastor Sunas Church when I was living in Koinange Street. The Lord go, told me, go to that ATM. And again, I found money. And I, go, I went and paid for my program. So in essence, God began to pay for my program. I don't know how, but I will connect. To, I, will, I will tell you how it was happening. It was happening that way because of the message I will be talking about giving on Saturday. It was happening that way because of the message I will give you on Saturday, the message of giving. God began to provide for me supernaturally. And I went on in that program until eventually God called me. How did God call me? I was in prayer. The normal way I prayed, because I would pray in the morning, I would pray in the evening. I was very prayerful. That one I will tell you. I was very, very prayerful. But my prayer was not even about me. I had gotten a baby, our third born, that was physically challenged. You understand? And um, uh, I did not know at first, but uh, convulsions began, and um, the child was affected in the brain. And the child had a, a problem, you know, speaking and talking. And uh, that caused me to pray a lot. So my prayer was not about ministry. My prayer was for healing of our daughter, uh, Cecilia. I wanted God to do something about Cecilia. And therefore, my prayer intensified. My prayer increased. My prayer, you can imagine a prayer of a parent that is in pain. Because you never knew when the child would convulse. And the doctors were saying this is very dangerous because they would be very strong. In one day, she would convulse like three times. And uh, you can imagine the pain I had in my heart. And my prayer was motivated and instigated and fueled by this uh, thing that I want my child to be well. And I prayed and prayed. Sometimes I would sleep outside our house. And all I wanted is for our child to be, I was not praying that God make my ministry. I did not even understand I had a ministry anyway. Uh, I'm not praying about ministry because I don't have one. And in the course of prayer and prayer and prayer, uh, after one year and a half, one year and a half of praying for my child, one day, as usual, I went to my closet and I went to my altar because now I had my altar. And instead of praying, when I began to thank him, the Lord began to speak to me. He said, a time like this, it was in July, a time like this, next year, you'll have your own ministry. Can you imagine? I never served as a pastor in any church. That time I was a cleaner. The best I had done to preach like a pastor is the home cell. I had a home cell that was doing very well. And many times in that home cell, those who are members of that home cell, if you're online, you will attest to it. I was not preaching. I used to give another brother called Brother Eric. And Brother Eric was the one preaching all the time because I never thought myself able to preach. So I would organize, make it comfortable. You understand? Make sure there is tea giving. Make sure there is a cake giving. I bought new cups for my members or, the, or those people who are coming uh, to that. And that is what was going on. And now, oh, lo and behold, God has said that I need to serve him. I need to serve him. I need to serve him. That at a time like this next year, you'll have a church. And let me tell you, I fought that tooth and nail. I fought it to the last. I fought it hard. I fought it hard. I said, no, I can't be a pastor. I want to do business. And I want to be a teacher. And above all, because I had a background of economics, I wanted to work with World Bank. Hallelujah. And I had, I had already started hearing voices. You are going to work uh, in World Bank. We are going to be talking about voices also. How many voices do you hear? You know, because that is also something very that is very important 
when it comes to being called? How many voices are there? Initially, I had heard from myself that I need to work with World Bank. Now, this one, I'm in time of prayer, and God stops my prayer, interrupts my prayer, and tells me, a time like this next year, you'll have your own ministry. N the next day, I went to the same altar. He told me, and the name of the ministry is Jesus Lives Ministries. Hiya. God, you are, I will not pray now about my child. I'll not pray about my job. I'll not pray about my, my business because we had a business now. What, what is this? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. What is this? Lord, what is this? Because every time I went there, he's talking about the church. So there's nothing for me that I got from thinking. Then he goes on and tells me that your church is along uh, the junction of Moktadada Street and uh, near Jivanji. Hey! Instructions upon instructions. Upon instructions. Hallelujah. And um, from there, I continued to pray. I continued to pray, but I told him a condition. I said, Lord, as we are approaching, because now the year passed, praying for it, but not so much. You know, he has spoken, okay, let's now do other things. So dreams began to come. Dreams began to come. I'll not talk about the dreams now. Dreams beca began to come, and there were things that I was seeing. I uh, will talk in another so that uh, you come in the next broadcast. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Dreams began to come. Dreams began to come. And then after that, um, the Lord told me that uh, the, the street is the junction. He said it's a junction. And I did not know that because I was not very conversant with Nairobi. I'm from Kitali. My home is in Kitali. And where I was working before I met my husband was West Pokot District, a school known as Tartar -tar Girls. Hallelujah. I told you today I'm going to, to really open up. And um, so I don't know Nairobi well. So I tell my husband, where is Moktadada Jivanji? And my husband takes me there. And we drive through, and I'm praying. Because he was not born again, I was not telling him anything. Mine was to pray. I said, God, if it's your will, and you have said I will have a church here, then let it be so. So I drive through. I drive the other way, hallelujah, with him, and uh, it is done. Now, next year has come. That is uh, 2008. 2008. 207 is when God has spoken to me. 2008 is here. And... Um, I decide uh, by the month of April to book an appointment with my pastors. And I said, I will talk to you in the month of June because this church is supposed to start in July. So when do you talk to your pastor? June. That's what I felt. And uh, anyway, that one I will not take the whole credit. My brother, Ambassador Isaac Njenga, is the one who directed me, said, go and book an appointment, take time, pray to be double sure, and then go. You can book an appointment for two months. Within that time, you would have known for sure whether God has called you or God has not called you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to stop there, children of God. I will continue uh, on Wednesday. This Friday, this Friday, our Balm of Gilead this time, I will share about whether you are called or not. Hallelujah. Take note of that. Uh, because of time uh, and the curfew uh, things, I cannot go on. I wish I could go on. But uh, I will share more next Wednesday. So keep it here. I will continue on Wednesday. But on Saturday, I'll be sharing on the power of sacrifice. I will be sharing on the power of sacrifice. And I will talk about my own giving, my life of giving. My life of giving. How come I would go to an account and get money? Was it demonic? Was I a devil worshiper? We'll be talking about that on, um, on, 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 on uh, Saturday. Saturday. This Friday will be online again. At uh, uh, Friday will be online again. And I think uh, uh, I will not do it from... Uh, uh, maybe I, shall, I should do it from here. I want to start doing also some programs from home. I want to do some programs from home as the Holy Spirit because he's talking to me a lot. I don't know whether you think it's okay we can be also doing some programs from home uh, as I feel. You know, haphazard, freestyle, 
freestyle uh, program so that uh, I share sometimes when God, um, uh, Helen, you're saying, wow, powerful story, ma'am. Yeah, it's very powerful. You need to hear to the end of it. You need to hear to the end of it. It's powerful because some of you have calls and very powerful calls, but you have not known. You have not known that you have the call of God. And therefore, all you do is um, you are told uh, this, you are told that, you don't know this. Uh, let me tell you, God does not confuse himself. Another thing I want to say, no one ever prophesied, apart from one guy that was with me in Christ Embassy, and he was a cleaner. He's the one who was cleaning uh, the church, cleaning everything. Uh, he's now Blessed Memories, uh, Sylvester Bonke. He's the one who told me one day, he told me, I have seen God using you mightily. No pastor, no prophet ever told me that I have a call of God. Nobody told me. God spoke to me himself. God uh, talked to me himself, apart from that one man of God. And, uh, you know, I never took him seriously because for me, I was doing business and I wanted to do business. You understand? I wanted to sell cars and um, I had started and I wanted, uh, I was doing, um, I was one of the people, pioneers of forever uh, living uh, products in Kenya, but I would get them through Nigeria. I was also doing a number of things. I was doing, um, I was doing what? Uh, what else was I doing? I was selling cosmetics and then I began to do cereals. So I was a business person and I was a teacher at the same time. You know, I was doing business. I was a hustler. You know what people call hustler, but I don't like that name hustler so much because we children of God are not hustlers because the Lord has already ordained our path to succeed anyway. So I was doing so many things. And if you had uh, that guy, when he prophesied to me, I told him, no, for me, I want to do business because I knew I would really make it in business because first of all, my background was that in academically, I did the economics, I did business. So um, I was teaching that in school, in highway secondary school, I was doing that. God had privileged me uh, when I got married, my husband took me back to school and I was doing my master's degree. So for me, teach, uh, preaching was not anywhere near. And, uh, but I thank God because God knows that if I, people kept telling me, maybe I would not have listened. I don't know. Uh, because uh, I knew the path I was supposed to take. Career-wise, I wanted to work for World Bank. And if not that, I wanted to do business. And that's what I was thinking about all the time how I can get government tenders, how I can get uh, a company tenders and supply, all that. I considered so many things. I considered so many things. But God has the final say at all times. God has the final say. At <laughs> Ambassador, I say, I can attest that the woman of God indeed called. Having a ministry was never on her thoughts or her plans. True, uh, uh, Pastor Isaac Njenga, Ambassador, our Ambassador. It was not there. It was the last thing ever, ever, ever. And even if somebody came and said, that says the Lord, I would have doubted. Uh, I would have doubted. But God spoke to me himself. God spoke to me himself. And um, I know those God has called, he will speak to you himself. You don't have to wait on anybody to tell you that you have been called. May God call you himself. You who has been called, you have the holy calling of God. May God call you himself. The work is plenty. The work is a lot. And I want to tell you, when he calls you, he also provides for you. I've just told you, at that time, nobody could give money, you know, to me. And when I was offered the opportunity by uh, Pastor Denge, Reverend Denge of, um, of, um, of uh, uh, Biblia Usema, and I love him so much, uh, Reverend Denge, because he walked with me that journey of being on radio. And he has also always encouraged me on radio matters. Um, when he told me, can I tell people to support you? Uh, you send your number there. I said, no, I don't have authority to do that because I'm not a pastor. I'm not, even if I'm preaching, I'm doing it out of my own uh, uh, desire, out of my own desire, because I'll be talking about that. Offerings are not received by anybody that is not ordained to receive. You never know what an offering has. People have been fought through money. And if you have not ordained to receive money, you know, offerings, then it could bring you a lot of problems. Hallelujah. You can't be receiving offerings. Oh, you are in that church, JLM, yes. Can I give you my offering? Even you, you are a member of that church. Don't receive. Don't receive. And if you receive it, receive it on behalf of the altar of JLM. Don't you yourself. 
Am I being clear? And I want to talk to people in the most definite way. And uh, I thank God for the fire he has brought me because I, I started from nowhere. I was not a pastor in any church. So you ask me, how did I get members? That's what I'll be sharing. Every Wednesday, I'll be sharing. This is a series that has begun. And I want you to remind me, don't forget where I have stopped. Where did I stop? I stopped that. Now uh, I have already booked an appointment. I want you to remind me, I booked an appointment with Bishop Moradi through Mama Ronica. I booked an appointment and uh, I was to see the pastor. Two months, and I've said my brother is the one who advised me, told me, give yourself time and don't just rush into the issue. Because in April, I would have said it. But he told me, give yourself time, Pastor uh, Ambassador Isaac Njenga. He told me, give yourself two months at least. When you are about the time God told you, you know, now he's just believing what I'm telling him. He said, that's when you go and now you say what God has told you. Because I'm one person that is submitted, fully submitted to God, and also fully submitted to authority. I want to tell you, I have a spiritual father that I love, and I'm fully submitted. I've been submitted to him for 12 years. And again, I will be telling you how he became my father, how he became my father. Because people have many questions about pastors' lives. You know, we look like uh, things just happened. But once he calls you, he orders your steps gradually. Orders your steps. You don't have to struggle about the steps and getting where God wants you to be. And that's why I'm very confident that God is going to take this ministry to higher dimensions because he has already rolled out the blueprint. He has given me the plans. He, I, at one point, I wrote the plans of God down. I wrote the plans of God down uh, that uh, as he was speaking to me, you know, he was telling me this and that and that and that. Uh, and I will tell you again how that happened. Hallelujah. I just love you people. And I know there are those here. Uh, you, Helen is saying, I don't know why I keep reading Helen and others are writing. Uh, but Enoch says, uh, Luhende, that uh, that is a powerful testimony. Glory to God. That's a powerful testimony. Um, um, I want us to talk and then... Uh, such a deep revelation not to receive money unless you are ordained to do so yes because money is a spirit i'll be talking about it on saturday money is a spirit even the way you handle money it will either accept you or refuse you and that i was taught by pastor chris Oyakilome. how you handle money you know is also a very important thing it's very important how you handle money it can either reject you it's also very spiritual money is a spirit it's a paper but it's backed by the wealth of nations. Hallelujah. It's backed by the wealth of nations. And not only that, the backing is also heavenly. Because where the money originated, it originated from the minerals in the world. That before money was backed by gold. Hallelujah. And therefore it is very spiritual in every aspect. But I will be sharing with you as the Lord enables me to give insight to people. Because there is so much that uh, sometimes we don't talk about. Uh, because we know them and uh, you feel... Maybe it's just for you. But I think when I share my testimony, somebody is identifying with it. Somebody will be encouraged. When it happens to somebody, they will know, oh, 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 this is what uh, Bishop was talking about. You know, we don't want to hold anything. Um, uh, Paul said at one time, and uh, I think uh, I will look for that scripture. I love it so much. And uh, I'm starting mentorship. We're not starting. We have been having mentorship called Bethel Mentorship. Uh, Bethel Mentorship. And... Um, I think I'm going to do it, and uh, I will be sharing a lot of things online, not the whole class, because of the people who are far, the people who are very far. But if you desire, we'll send you materials. We have been having mentorship for how many years, uh, Pastor Mkobe? We did it with you, and uh, Let Kubo. I think we eight years. Eight years. We did eight for eight years. Then we stopped uh, because we wanted to start a Bible college. Uh, but when when I was in the mountain. Uh, the Lord uh, reminded me that I need to mentor people because uh, like this church now where I am, JLM, uh, we have very many people that are new and they have not gone through any kind of mentoring. And uh, God gave me that responsibility to do it personally, Bethel, Bethel uh, Mentorship School. So if you desire to join it, um, please send your name to that number uh, that is there. To, um, on next Wednesday, I will be call taking calls. I'll be taking calls and maybe you'll share what uh, you have been seeing, what you have been feeling. 
Uh, please don't write. Don't write into my inbox because sometimes they can get so many. Uh, let's share so that, because I'm also sharing about myself, share about yourself. And uh, you never know whom you'll bless. I want to be all out blessing people uh, because of what God told me uh, in the mountain. He told me I carry so much that the world needs and I've been withholding. You know, sometimes you feel you don't want to be too much. Uh, but I feel now I want to be too much. I want to share everything. I want to tell people everything. And I want just to be a blessing to everyone uh, that um, uh, that is connected to me and to the grace that God has given me. Uh, you may be in another church, but this will help you. I'm not trying to get members. I'm trying to get people to know, to be knowledgeable. And uh, I'm sure that God will bless them. And uh, Bethel Mentorship School is uh, back, will be back. And uh, I think... Um, uh, the moment uh, the churches reopen, I will begin with it immediately. I know, Sharon, you have already graduated from that, but you have people like Najosfin who have not been there, and Sulta has not been there, Albert has not been there. So we need the mentorship classes, uh, and I thank God because uh, 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 Mvati, Mrs. Mvati will be taking the place of Kubo, um, uh, will be taking the place of uh, Kubo. Uh, Mrs. Mvati will be taking the place of the uh, Blessed Memories uh, Kubo, she used to do counseling, and she'll be doing, I don't do it alone, we do three of us, and uh, uh, Mkobe is here, we have been teaching with her, uh, for her she teaches on kingdom finances, kingdom finances, and I think on, on, on Saturday she'll also be talking on giving, and what she understands on kingdom fi finances, so uh, we are going to uh, help people online, uh, but the classes and um, the rigorous uh, training is never easy. It's a very rigorous training. And this time, I want to take people to a, a, a bigger mountain. I used to take people to uh, David's mountain, but now we are going to go to another mountain where people will be trained on praying on the mountain. And that's it. That's why I'm saying those online will just get a bit of it. And uh, when you come online and you want to be a part of this program, I want to ask you, uh, to give us your email address, we'll be sending notes to you and uh, we'll be sending exams because it's also examinable. The class is very, very examinable and uh, it will help you. But uh, if you can make it, we'll be having our classes in Hallingham. Uh, we have been having, we have even desks. It's not a joke. We, we have done that for eight years, but we had stopped to start a Bible college. But the Lord told me, even as we start a Bible college, we should also continue with the, the mentoring. The mentoring will continue. The mentoring will continue because a lot of people want to be mentored, uh, to understand, because we teach all the topics of Bible college, homiletics, that is the art of preaching. We teach on the art of preaching. We, uh, we teach on pneumatology, that is um, the study of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we teach on what else? Uh, Pastor Mkobe, we teach on uh, kingdom, service. kingdom service and finances. We teach also on counseling. How, would, how will you cancel a person? And that one will be done by an expert. That is uh, uh, Maria Mvati will be offering her services. And uh, we want just to thank God for all that in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, and I know you'll be blessed. And uh, I want you to invite many people and inform them about this school, Bethel School of Mentorship. It will be, uh, we'll be sharing it, uh, poster on, online. I uh, will be talking uh, every now and then about it. And uh, get ready. As we start, we are starting hitting the road hard. We are hitting the road hard. We on fire, on fire. Because um, everybody that will ever be great has a mentor. Everyone that will be great will be having a mentor. And I will also be talking about mentors and uh, spiritual authorities. You can have many mentors, but you have only one spiritual authority. And that is your spiritual father or your spiritual mother. Uh, so we'll be talking about all that and some of the topics I will be sharing online and um, we'll also be sharing on a number of things. I'll also feel I need to share on dispensations. We have uh, uh, seven dispensations that I will be talking about here online, here online. And I will also teach that uh, in the mentorship school. We were not having that, um, that uh, addition, but we'll be talking about that. We'll be talking about that. I will also be talking, I'll also be teaching on eschatology. That is end time, end time studies. So uh, be blessed, woman of God. I feel blessed hearing you. God bless you, uh, Robert. Uh, so we'll be doing that. I want just to share what I have. Uh, and I was saying something here uh, about Paul, uh, because sometimes we, we are not reachable. 
all we do is preach, 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 preach. But every servant of God you see has a story. And every servant of God you see has something in them that is very crucial to somebody else. For me, the books that bless me so much, and you can look for them, are for Bishop Oyedepo. I have read almost 20 books of Bishop Oyedepo. They bless me so much. They have made me who I am. The messages of Pastor Chris Oyakilome have blessed me so much. So you are not made by just one thing. You are made by so many other, so many other things and so many other men of God that God has called. Uh, and I want to look for a scripture that Paul talks about something. And I know you'll be blessed. So next Wednesday, be ready with your questions. And um, um, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and I'm sure you will understand uh, which dimension you have been called to. Because some of you may have, may have been called. Um, uh, I've been called into the ministry of... Uh, I call it Ministry of Dorcas and um, of the helps of charity, you know. Even charity you cannot do if you don't have the call of God upon your life. And uh, that's what I want to, to look at. Um, and, uh, and, and I know somebody will be blessed. One day you'll thank me the way I'm thanking all these men of God. I'm mentioning them uh, online, uh, you know. I'm mentioning uh, Bishop Oyedepo, I'm mentioning Pastor Chris. Uh, my spiritual father, Bishop Muredi, you know, all those made uh, uh, Pastor Esther Obasike, and I will be saying something about her also. Uh, you know, they mentor you, but they don't know. Wherever they are, uh, they don't know that they mentored somebody, you know. You don't have to meet anybody for them to mentor you, like Bishop Oyedepa. I've seen him in Winner's Church. I've not been close to him. At least I was in uh, Christ Embassy, and I met Pastor Chris Oyakilome when he was talking to the delegates, international delegates and uh, leaders you know so that is uh, it and um i want us to uh, um, i'm looking for something i will be looking for that scripture if you can find it we'll be talking about i can't find it i think i'm pressed for time that's why so uh, be blessed and uh, just know that mentorship is beginning as soon as we start. And mentorship normally uh, starts at 5.30. 5.30 a.m. is part of mentoring somebody. So you have to be in class. Was it 5.30? Madam Kobe, from 5.30 to 6.30 so that somebody is able to go to work. So normally it's one hour class, one hour class, uh, 5.30 a.m. to 6.30 and... Uh, we ask for a small fee because of the materials and also now our teachers will be given something uh, for transport and what have you. In the past, we were not paying teachers, but now we want to pay teachers. So we'll be asking for, um, for something small, uh, but the amount will not change from what it used to be. It's a fee of 20000 for a period of three months or two months. Uh, how many weeks? Uh, eight weeks. For a period of uh, eight weeks to 12 weeks depending on um, what is happening, your assignments, and what have you. And then you graduate, and you are given a certificate. You are given a certificate. I was talking to one of my daughters, and she told me that certificate she has used, and she has a very good job. Hallelujah. She has a good job. She has been uh, seen to have gone through mentorship, and she's now holding a very big office. Uh, so we give certificates, and uh, that class begins at 5.30 a.m. Uh, all the way to 6.30 and when we begin, it will be taking between 8 to 12 weeks, depending on um, the time we'll do uh, the mountain and uh, so on. And now we'll be going to greater mountains. You know, we were doing a prayer center because, you know, you are, we were soft on people. But now, no more softness. We are hitting the road running because of the call of God upon your life. And I know many of you um, uh, uh, I have the call of God and especially those people that God has connected to me. God told me to raise giants in the nation of Kenya and beyond. So I know if you are connected to me, 
you are going to do mighty works for the Lord. And uh, with that, we are going to do our giving. Somebody talked about giving. I am inviting him to listen to me on Saturday uh, during Fortizo. And so Fortizo will begin at, uh, what time do we begin? At 11 a.m. So be online at 11 a.m. And I will be talking about giving in the simple way of giving in church, giving your tithe. Why do you give your tithe? Why do you give your, your first fruit? Uh, because people say it is uh, in a pit on our kati and what have you. And another thing, uh, you don't have to look at pastors as uh, uh, greedy people. You know, we want just money. I want to tell you, for me, I was a teacher. I've done business all my life. I'm a farmer. Even now, I am a farmer. So when you look at us like people who are called men, surely, it's very wrong. You know, it's very, 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 very wrong. And uh, I like what uh, um, the bishop in Bishop Lai talked about in uh, Mombasa. You know, sometimes we, we feel discouraged when uh, we are looked at as con people. We don't con people. We don't go to your house to ask for money. You know, we ask you to support the work because we cannot do this work without that support. You understand? We cannot do that work without your support. And therefore, when you give, you are saying, Bishop, continue preaching. When you give, you are saying, print those materials for mentorship. When you pay for your mentorship, there is something you are saying, essentially. And let me tell you, don't be caught uh, with people who talk about giving. If you can give, give. If you can support buildings of churches, do it. You understand? You can even help your pastor to have a car. There is nothing wrong with that. You are blessing a servant of God. You know, you are blessing a servant of God. So do it. Do it. And do not hesitate. Do it. And do not hesitate. And God will bless you. Hallelujah. Till I am down And all my soul so weary When troubles come And my heart bad and be then I am still waiting in the silence until you come and sit a while with me. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk me see I am strong when I am on your shoulders you raise me up to more than I can be you raise me up you raise me up so I can stand on mountains you raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be when I am down. And oh, my soul so weary when troubles come and all my heart and be. Then I am still waiting here in silence until you come and sit a while with me. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy sea. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise Sure. 
wonders you raise me up to more than I can be and I am strong I am strong when I am on your shoulders you raise me up to more than I can be you raise me up you raise me up so I can stand on mountain you raise me up to walk on stormy sea I am strong when I am on your shoulders you raise me up to all that I can be I am strong I am strong when I am on your shoulders you raise me up to more than I can be I am strong I am strong when I am on your shoulders you raise me up to more than I can be hallelujah hallelujah tomorrow will be on at 1 p.m. remember it's a new month is tomorrow a new month? Friday. 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 Not tomorrow. Uh, uh, but uh, I've already written. <laughs> Friday. Friday. 1 p.m. Uh, so tomorrow. It's not tomorrow. It's Friday. 1 p.m. Friday. Let me write Friday. Uh, Friday. 1 p.m. And then next week we have revival conference. We'll have revival conference. And... Uh, I want just to share with you that people are being blessed by this broadcast because even online people are being delivered. I've received a lot of messages, even healings. Uh, I've received a lot of, uh, of uh, testimonies of people being healed. And I will be sharing with you those testimonies uh, in a little while on my page. People are being healed. People are being delivered. Doors are being opened. And um, people who have been in a coma... Uh, like yes, today I received a call from my daughter. Um, uh, what is her name? Uh, Pauline, Pauline Gidiga, Gidiga, and uh, we have been praying for her house girl, and um, that's house manager, and uh, the house manager uh, got into a coma uh, for a number of days, and today she just woke up. Yesterday they did a scan; nothing was wrong with the brains, and uh, gloriously. Uh, she has been healed and she's being discharged. She was being discharged by the time I was coming. We stood and we prayed and I told her, uh, God is with her and God will heal the lady. And I continued to pray and that, was, that is what has happened. She was in a coma, but now she has come out and uh, she's healed totally in Jesus' mighty name. So continue to share your testimonies and uh, continue to reach us on that number that is there. We are going to also be opening the second number uh, which will remain with one of the people and uh, we will get to know what you're going through and uh, we will pray with you because we continue in prayers because God is a God that answers prayers. Number two, uh, what I wanted to say is um, uh, make sure that uh, when we come on online, I want to be very deep and share a lot of things. Uh, make sure that you invite as many people. When we put the broadcast, uh, we say we'll be online this time invite many people because i feel this time i don't want to withhold i want to be a blessing to as many people as possible and i know by so doing you'll get to know where you are and how you are and i'm generous with that because god called me when i was not qualified i'm not one of the people that was qualified if it was business i was very qualified as a teacher i was very qualified but not as a preacher and here i am preaching what informed my preaching what caused me to preach so we'll be doing that on wednesday but on Friday, uh, it will be commanding the new month so that glorious things will be spoken of that month. And I feel that month is the end of this corona, mm -hmm. uh, the month of May. 
Remember I told you on Good Friday that March was the end of, uh, okay, I did not say it was the end, but April was the beginning uh, of a new year. And that I got from Exodus 12, verse 2. I was listening to Prophet T.B. Joshua, and he was saying uh, the end of a bad year came uh, for them in March, and after that, a new beginning. I was hearing that yesterday, and I was surprised by what God is doing. Uh, Somebody is watching us from Philadelphia, U.S. God bless you, uh, Sajila. Sajila, Sajila. I hope I'm pronouncing it right and I shall be well. So we'll be talking um, Friday, we shall command the month, we shall have a time of prayer to remove all evil from the month, and we shall be here at 1 p.m. Shall be here at 1 p.m. And then, um, uh, that is uh, tomorrow? Yeah, the day after tomorrow. The day after tomorrow, that is, uh, tomorrow is Thursday. Yes. Tomorrow is Thursday, so we shall do that. But uh, if you're online, I can pray with you midnight. I feel midnight is good. We can do midnight prayers, but not from here. We'll do it from home. We can pray at midnight, uh, midnight prayers, and then, um, and uh, I think in uh, Philadelphia, I don't know what time it will be, Kenya midnight. Uh, what time is it in the U.S.? So I think I will do midnight prayers on uh, tomorrow. Midnight, can we just put it down? Midnight prayers, Thursday. I think we, knew we need to do an e flyer so that people can understand. But I, I want also to introduce those midnight prayers every night. Midnight prayers Thursday. To command, to command the month, to command the month. I just feel I have so much. The month of me, the month of me. I love these people too much. Yeah, we'll have midnight prayers tomorrow. Uh, in the U.S., I don't know what time it is. Uh, but uh, even you, Helen, tell us what time it is so that we know whether we can sing. But uh, Kenya time, uh, midnight, we shall be commanding the morning. I hope you'll be online. I'll not be alone. You know, some people love sleeping. But if you are to be called and used by God, you cannot be sleeping before midnight. You have to sleep after midnight. God bless you. Oh, it's 10.36 p.m. Yes, join us in uh, Melbourne, Australia. God bless you for watching us from there. Uh, please watch us that time. We are going to command um, uh, midnight. And uh, at midnight, um, uh, Juma Jill is saying profoundly blessed. Thank you, Bishop. Much blessing. So we shall be doing that. And uh, I know God will do. We need to do so much prayer. We need to do so much prayer because only through prayer shall the Lord lead us. So I'll be having prayers uh, written down that you'll pray after me. I will also be prophesying to people at midnight tomorrow so that uh, we keep this fire burning. And then from Monday the 4th, Monday the 4th going on, the whole week will be online from 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock with our revival time. Open your spirit and you'll receive a lot and God will bless you. Shalom, shalom, shalom. God bless you and God increase you. Uh, we shall have a song for those who had not, you had already given. So, but give a song, give us a song to wind up. Shalom, God uh, bless you. God bless you. We'll see you. Our God, he's champion. He reigns forevermore. Forevermore. Break now, oh.
God, He's champion. He reigns forevermore. Forevermore. And I got His champion. He 